I'm going to turn this into this with the help of this, this, and this. Stick around. We'll check it out. All right, before I get into a bulk of the work, let me give you a little lay of the land. Uh, here we are with our Starlink here installed on a flagpole buddy. And then I have a jack here that has a wire that goes all the way into the rig and up into an equipment cabinet. I'll show you that. I do have some videos of this previous work. I will put the links in the description below. All right, this is our half bath. And all of the equipment is up in the cabinet up there. So. All right, so what we have here is a couple of uh, stereo cabinet fans. I got one there and one there. And what they're doing is they're pulling hot air out of here because it does get kind of warm in here. And then over here, I've got a couple of vents that are allowing um, air to be pulled in from the cavity that's behind here. Up here, we have the cable coming in from Starlink. And then I have another cable that goes down into the basement where I run another access point if I need to. I don't have it hooked up right now. And then next to that is the 120 volt power that I pulled up into here to power all this stuff. On this side, that box there is the Verizon 5G gateway. Over here is the T-Mobile 5G gateway. And then this up above here is the Starlink router followed by the box below it, which is the Starlink power supply. And then below that, we have an uninterruptible battery backup power supply that's keeping everything up and running. And then we, of course, have the star of the show, which is this Peplink V1. And installed in it is a Roamlink multi-carrier SIM card that will connect to the cellular carriers of T-Mobile, Verizon, AT&T, and US Cellular. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of all of that stuff back there. And the only thing that'll be left in here is this and a small power supply to rig it all up. All right, so here are the components we're gonna need for this project. First, we have some 12 gauge three conductor wire. Uh, positive negative and then one for the chassis ground i'm using 12 gauge because i'm only going about 18 to 20 feet from the battery and the voltage drop from the battery to the end of this wire at the converter won't be that significant as a matter of fact i've already done the project and i know that'll be 13.6 at the uh, dc converter from the battery which is also at about 13.6 um, if you're going to go any longer you're going to want to do the math to figure out what gauge you're going to want to use um, some people have been known to go down to like a six gauge eight gauge ten gauge um, to get the job done in my case 12 gauge is going to work fine and you'll probably be less than 20 feet from your battery so that'll be fine and this is uh, rated it'll do 20 amps um, so I will put a 20 amp inline fuse closest to the battery to protect the wire um, should something go wrong short out somewhere the fuse will blow stop fire the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a switch closer to the um, DC converter where I can get access to it easily. As you saw, I'm up in a cabinet, so going up there to shut things off will be a little bit of a nuisance. So I want to put this a little bit lower so I can turn it on and off at will. If we're not um, going to be using it uh, away and we don't need it, or I just don't want to drain down the batteries if we're not using it. So um, then we have the SIM card. This isn't really the SIM card. It's just an SD card I'm using to represent the SIM card. But <clears throat> as I mentioned, I've got Roamlink, which is a multi-carrier uh, service from Mobile Must Have. It's been working out great. I've tested it for, I think, a little over six months now. And what it will do is connect to the strongest carrier in the area, um, that being either T-Mobile, Verizon, US Cellular, or AT&T. Um, in my neck of the woods, where we've been traveling recently, it mostly picks up on T-Mobile, and that's been quite good. Um, the DC converters, that's a little bit of a challenge. Um, Mobile Must Have offers this one, and this is kind of generic. You can get it off of Amazon too. It's about $129, and I had problems with this. Um, I actually 
talked to Mobile Must Have. We worked through a lot of things. We thought it was a voltage drop problem at first. We thought it was interference, all kinds of stuff. They sent me out a new one. I put it in. It was the same exact problem, and I did everything to troubleshoot that. I connected it directly to the battery very close. Um, I swapped out cables. I did a whole plethora of things. I actually got this one from Amazon, um, which is a, a, just like the one from Mobile Must Have. So I tried three of them, and they all gave the same problem, which was you would hook it up, be going great, and then the Starlink would reboot sporadically. Um, over and over and over again. It might hold on for 15, 20, 30 minutes and then boom, it would reboot. As soon as I took this out, went back to the Starlink power supply and the Starlink router, using all the same cable, except for the DC cable, of course, um, everything worked fine. So um, I, I sent that back, they gave me credit. They were very good to work with, so that's not a dig against um, mobile must have at all. The customer service there is outstanding. Um, I'm sure they're going to investigate and see what's going on and they probably, in my estimation, they probably won't carry this anymore but I can't speak for them so don't hold me to that. What I ended up doing is getting this one. Um, this is XSTAR Link. You can get this off Amazon as well. Uh, this is the one Starlink V3 which is a generation 3. It um, is a little bit more robust. Um, it weighs a little bit more. It has a bigger heat sink. Um, it has the convenience of having an on-off switch, which is nice. And then it has, and they give you the cable for this, uh, a plug-in. Rather than the screw terminals that you would have to screw the wires onto, and if you're using a larger gauge wire, that could be problematic. Um, and then if you want to take this out, you always got to break the screwdriver out and, and take that off. So this is a little nicer as it uses, uh, I think it's an Anderson connection if I'm not mistaken what they call that. And like I said, it has the on off. And so, and then it also has um, a 12 volt output, uh, such as this one did, which you can run to your router and power your router off DC as well. Uh, mobile must have, will sell you an adapter that comes from this USB-A um, to the Peplink, which is a four pin um, micro, um, Molex connector. This one does not. It gives you this type of connector um, plug on both ends. So I had to modify that. Um, I'll put the links to the uh, in the description below and the components that I used to do that. A wire stripper and a little pair of needle nose uh, pliers and you can get that done for less than five dollars in ten minutes of time. So yeah, so I ended up using this one. I'm doing this video after I've actually done all the work uh, because I had so much trouble with this. I chased this thing down for probably five days uh, pulling my hair out. So I can't um, recommend enough. You probably don't want to consider this one. Although um, I've seen some reviews. Some people have had great luck with it, but I also saw reviews on Amazon particularly where people are describing the same exact problem that I was having. So. Again, I'll put the links to it still down in the description below for all of this stuff. So now let me show you um, how I ran my cable. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail of that because everybody's rig is different. Um, but I want to give you a little bit of a show and tell of how I did it so you know what you're getting into should you decide to do this yourself. All right, stick around. Here we go. All right, as I said, I've already done this project, so I'm just going to give you a rundown of where I ran the cable. So from that cabinet where all the gear is, I come down the inside of this wall. Um, you saw the penetrations that I had up there earlier and that wire drops down and then I can pick it up here and push it that way through to the basement. Behind here is our furnace and then just to the right is our water heater and it's clear and wide open behind there so that's very easy. What made this also much easier is that in the living room here behind the TV there is this grate and you can see some of the wires that I got coming down. So I took that off and that allowed me to kind of fish the wire down more easily. And then I talked about putting in a switch. So down here it was convenient. I put that switch, you can't see it now, I can turn it on. It has the light there. So if I want to turn on and off the Starlink and the Peplink and the fans all together, I can just use that switch right there. All right, so let me give you a little bit of an idea of where the cable goes once I get it out of this living space and into the basement and to the battery. All 
All right, so on the outside of the rig, right where that light is, is about the back of that um, cabinet where I got the gear. So the wire comes down that interior wall and then it comes across here through the storage here. I run it up through this pipe from here or this um, slick channel and it goes there into the utility area, which is not really accessible, but here it is here where all the battery and connections are and stuff like that. And it comes up across there. It's dark in here, you can't really see, but it comes down and then I split it out here, connect to my DC um, negative bus, DC positive bus over here. I've got that 20 amp inline fuse. And then here's the chassis ground going down to there. That's it. Um, I'm probably running that cable less than 30 minutes in my rig, but I know my anatomy here pretty well, so um, it was pretty simple for me to do. All right, here's the finished product. As you can see, all we have in here now is the PepLink, the Starlink router and the Starlink power supply, as well as the 5G gateway from Verizon and T-Mobile. They're all gone. And here is the X-Star Link DC converter. It's being powered by the 12 gauge wire that I brought up from battery, positive, negative in the chassis ground. Um, I replaced this faceplate here, just have three positions so I could get the wire out cleanly. And this disconnects easily from there. Um, if I ever want to take this out, I can just unplug that, but I will have to unscrew the uh, chassis ground. Although behind here, I do have it connected with the Wago, so I could quick disconnect that. Of course, we have this cable that goes out to the Starlink, and then here's the cable coming out of here, feeding the network connection into the PepLink. And as I pointed out, this device will also power up a router. So this connector right here is going down and connects into the PepLink. I did have to modify that a bit, as I pointed out. So that um, was an easy enough to do thing, and it's up and running fine. The other thing I did was uh, these fans were running off a 120 volt power adapter that I had plugged into the power over there. Uh, seeing as they do run off six volts, I got a buck converter and um, just tapped into the 12 volt line, fused it, put the buck converter to step the voltage down to six volts, three amps, and now those are running off DC as well. So there is now no reliance on AC power for our internet connection whatsoever. So it's very efficient, very clean, obviously a lot less clutter. Well, all right, that installation, despite the problems I had with the DC converter at the start, went pretty smoothly. I'll tell you though, that DC converter really frustrated me. I did everything I could to troubleshoot that. I broke out my oscilloscope looking for interference coming from the chassis. I was looking for ground loops, all kinds of stuff. I did have to go through the troubleshooting procedure with Mobile Must Have to prove that it was the product and not something I was doing. And as I said, they um, stood right up and took care of that once we determined that it was the product. So great customer service from them. I'm glad I found an alternative product that solved the problem, but I'm a little disappointed that I couldn't get that from M Mobile Must Have. Um, so through the video, I kind of oversimplified a lot of things. I didn't show a lot of detail on the installation. The reason I did that is because I don't want to show exactly how to do it because everybody's rig is a little bit different. Their skill sets are a little bit different and things like that. I just wanted to really show what the potential is possible um, and what you can get done with a little bit of research, a little bit of ingenuity, and a little bit of skill and um, patience in this case. So the PepLink is really the star of the show, as I pointed out earlier. That device allows us to bring in multiple service providers, Starlink, the Roamlink with the T-Mobile, US Cellular, AT&T, and Verizon. And you can even bring in a Wi-Fi connection from a park. Uh, so if you're there, you can bring that in and have it kind of be repeated by the PepLink and present on your standard Wi-Fi connection inside your RV. So PepLink is really good where you can take all those signals and kind of combine them and offer a very stable connection. It can also prioritize where you make, let's say you want to use Starlink primarily and then use the others as secondary. 
It will do that, and if one of them fails, it'll move the other into the top position so that you don't lose connectivity. And we really rely on that because we're working from the road all the time. Ellen is on conference calls all day. So PepLink, RoamLink, and Starlink all put together is a great, great solution for us. Well, I think that's all I have to say about this. It um, was a lot of information to cover. Hopefully I got enough out there for you. I put a bunch of links in the description below to help you get some more information. Of course, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'll do my best to answer them for you. And if you want to get something like this done, um, I might be able to find somebody to help you get it done. Or um, maybe if I'm in your area, I could do it for you. And of course, if you're not comfortable doing it yourself, you're always best to hire a professional. All right, so as usual, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe. And you think anybody else will get value from this content, please share it out to them. Um, yeah, so this is third week of tech videos. Hopefully I can get one of an RV campground or resort review soon. And you can see Ellen's smiling face and not have to put up with me. But till then, we'll see ya.